super excited about today. I've never flown into Mather. It is just shy of a cross country, so I'm a little bit upset about that. It's 49 nautical miles on the nose, and in order to log across country, it must be 50 miles. So our pre-flight is already complete. We're gonna hop in the airplane and fly to Sacramento Mather Airport. And after a quick Uber ride, we're gonna be the first to try out FlightSim.com's new advanced aviation training device. So let's hop in the RG and get to it. We got a short flight today, as I was saying, heading to Mather Airport just outside of Sacramento. Um, as I'm in the Bay Area, I'm kind of in the East Bay. So it's not super far, but the drive would have probably been closer to an hour and a half-ish this morning versus a 23-minute flight in the 182 RG. We're going to go over there and test out some new products from FlightSim.com. They actually brought out one of their advanced training devices. Um, You've seen them on the channel. I've talked about them a few times before when I was at Flight Sim Expo a few months ago out in Providence, Rhode Island. First of all, it was the most realistic uh, simulator in terms of yoke and pedals I've ever felt. It truly felt like being inside of a 182 and uh, they've really gotten the forces and the telemetry correct, which is very important. And part of why I don't love flight simulators is if they're super sloppy on the controls and there's no feedback whatsoever, I feel disconnected and I find it really, really hard to fly. As it is on a simulator, it's kind of hard to land. If you're not in VR, the depth perception of how far you are from the ground is difficult. So you couple that with like, a sloppy yoke or sloppy pedals you really get no feedback and to me that is an absolute no-no so um, for the first time after using their product i felt connected to the airplane it felt just like the real thing and that's what i'm all about if i'm using a flight simulator since i fly in real life it's not just like you know, it is fun for me, obviously, that's why I do it, but it's not just that like aimless, pointless fun of, oh yeah, the, I'm using a sim because sims are kind of cool, but I don't know how to fly a real airplane. Um, I'm still learning how to fly a real airplane, don't get me wrong, I have my pilot certificate, I've got about 250 hours, I'm not yet an instrument rated pilot, I haven't gotten my commercial license yet, but these are things that I want to work toward, and I'm going to spend a lot of time in the sim doing so, so I want to make sure my sim setup is dialed, because uh, I will be able to log 20 hours of that towards my instrument rating, so look out for some of those things that are on the channel i'm excited for this business meeting um you know go see these companies see the new product um and figure out if um if and how i can end up working with flightsim.com in the near future i'm not being paid to say i like them i only want to work with people who make products that i already love and like and that i am willing to buy with my own money uh, as opposed to telling you something is great because they want me to tell you it's great As I was saying, this is a really quick flight. It's quick up and quick down. So let's get the baby deer legs back down, slow ourselves down, and descend into Mayfair. I haven't flown this aircraft in a few months, so this flight was a great opportunity to re-familiarize myself with the aircraft, and of course, to fly somewhere new. If you enjoy aviation and sim content, make sure you subscribe for more. We'll start a nice shallow turn to final. Airspeed is 80 knots, which I like. I'm very happy with that. I turned super early, but trust me, we'll be A-OK. -okay. All right, everything is good. Third notch of flaps. Oh, we're slowing on down nicely. If you watch closely, you notice that I landed flat. All three wheels pretty much touch at the same time, which made that front nose gear bounce. All right, so as we taxi to parking, do me a favor, comment down below and let me know, do you prefer videos like this or do you just wanna see the full flight videos? We made it, we're here on the ground, Mather Airport. They're probably gonna charge me 60 bucks for parking, but again, it beats the drive. So I will 100% take it. We're gonna run into the FBO, figure out you know what the situation is what they're gonna cost us, call an Uber real quick, and then head over to our meeting. As you can see, I have changed, no longer in the white tee and the bummy shorts. Business time. Camera's on me as always. Let's get it. I am beyond excited. Let's go get on the sim. Hello, this is Fabian Lim. I'm the founder of flightsim.com. And from a background perspective, I'm a private pilot with instrument, multi-engine, and an Eclipse 500 single pilot jet rating. This is the flightscene.com FC100 AATD pending. And we're right now putting the simulator to its paces. It has three degree of freedom powered by D-Box Gen 5. 
and over here we have our flagship FC100 console force feedback yoke 120 newtons below here we have the rudder pedals at 370 newtons and a maximum peak force of 180 newtons our flaps module is motorized uh, so is our elevator trim indicator as well this is as high end as it gets for a basic AATD structure as part of the AATD requirement we also have the standby instrument over here where you can adjust the barrel as like in all standby instruments here G1000 as standard PFD MFD audio panel itself and it's a, it's a nice touch with the latest X-Plane 12.3 getting the PFD and MFD screen is simply a mouse click away in the graphics interface we are powered by a single computer with a 5080 graphics card and surrounded by three about 65 inch screens so what's happening right now is we're going to fly into the storm as you can see over here and this is the beautiful X-Plane 12.3 Beta I believe it's Beta 2 and we're going to experience the feel of flying into the storm so this screen as mentioned allows you to enable the next rate over here and this brings up the weather itself the weather system so this is going to be awesome and the d-box has a neat plug-in for explain and let's see how the d-box along with the four feedback yoke and rudder pedals behave in well terrible weather conditions okay so here's the uh, worst weather to fly <sighs> convective thunderstorms all over so whether I'll never fly in in a 172 or 182? Exactly. <laughs> Parking brake is on. All right. Airspeed's alive, 30 knots, 40 knots. Five, knots, up off the ground. Oh, it gets so smooth though. Like just the feeling of this yoke. Oh wow. This is not a feeling easily replicated. And for reference, I just flew a 182 earlier today on the right, way here. So right. it's like I'm flying. That's true. Uh, what air what aircraft is it right now? This is a 172. 172, so very similar. Yeah. Just a little lighter on the controls. Correct. Exactly. It's very much like what I was just flying. This would be a nightmare if I was flying in real life. Oh yeah. <laughs> These are the flights that pilots don't come back from. Wow. I can only imagine the development that went into making all of this feel how this feels. Oh, we, we took a couple of days to tune it for sure. Yeah. It's not just a hardware or the software, it's the tuning. Exactly, that's what makes the biggest difference. Oh, yeah. Anybody can slap some stuff together and quote unquote it works, but does right. it have the fidelity and the feeling mm. of a real aircraft? And this does. Let's see if I pitch up. And then for in terms of fine tuning and um, making adjustments based on the type of aircraft you're flying, right. all the profiles load directly in. That's right. That's so if right. I were to switch to a 182, it's that simple. It's going to load the exactly. force feedback and exactly. feel different. I don't have to go, oh, 182, make it 10% more or whatever. It, it would, uh, the profile would have already been tuned. Right. So it's just plug and play. Awesome. Probably what a lot of people um, may not be aware about the ATDs, you have to also demonstrate the aircraft performance of the real aircraft was a simulated aircraft by plus minus five percent. Wow. Yeah. For the AATD, it is, oh. the, it oh, is the profiles of the aircraft we submit for right. approval. So that's going to be 172. For uh, us, it's going to be 172, the Piper yep. Archer yep. and the Piper Seminole. Okay. They're generally flight training aircraft. Right, exactly. What yes. you're actually going to use. Yes. Okay. 
Is there anything um, leaning towards aircraft that have a stick? Like, you know, right now, Sling's airplane is being widely used around the place as training aircraft. And then folks are also starting to use uh, Cirruses. So obviously, I would assume you're working on something for that without saying too much. Well, the truth is that we already have a control loading stick we are deploying on our Diamond D42 and 40. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> I so, didn't like that feeling at all. <laughs> okay. Yep, the weather's coming in. Wow. You know, subtle but realistic. Oh, man, it's so quick and easy to get lost in the clouds. <laughs> you really have to know and trust your instruments. These are not days that Southern California has often. Right. Southern California is known for clear, beautiful weather. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're overcast in the morning, in the summertime, you always have the marine layer, and then by one o'clock it burns off. Right. It was a, a neat place to fly. I think this is a, out here is probably an easier place to fly because you don't have a lot of overcast mornings out in the Sacramento mm -hmm. area, Central Valley. Convective weather, isn't it? Yeah, not much of it up here, which is nice, but, ooh. That would be a nightmare. This feels exactly like what it's like coming home on a bumpy day. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh -huh, the kind where you go, why did I do this? Why did I take off? I should have stayed home. You made it down, so and that was a good landing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You got down on the ground. Yeah. yeah. Oh. That was a workout, isn't it? It is. Oh, you're moving around, you're feeling the turbulence. It's almost as stressful as landing the plane in real life. Oh, yeah. Except landing in real life, you know, it's a, a little different just because you, you still are a little bit more one with the plane. It's that's awesome right, though, getting, right. yeah, it's awesome. And the fact that how it looks, you know, how it looks, the only thing the different is training your eyes to have depth perception of the ground. That right. I think is the hardest part in, in simulation. All right. Make sure you tune in for part two, where we break down some more of the key features of this amazing training device. And may there always be wind beneath your wings. Peace.